Hi, this is your host Sapil Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of T3M or topic of this month and topic of this month is data and today we have with us Lizzie Namur, co-founder and CEO of Telescope. Lizzie, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to host you here today and this is the first time, if I'm not wrong, we're talking to each other. So I would love to know a bit about the story of Telescope and you know, what is the problem that you're trying to solve? I think the problem that we're trying to solve is it's becoming harder and harder to secure and manage data at medium to large companies, as well as like security, privacy and data teams are just drowned with like manual work uh, and are constantly doing like operational work and overhead. And so we really want to help alleviate that problem as well. But if you look at the data movement, I mean, a lot of companies are doing it. Uh, Is there any specific either market or problem uh, area that you are looking at? Yes, in the security and privacy space. So the more data that you have, the harder it is to secure because you can't secure what you don't understand. And so you need to gain an understanding of your data. Where is it? Where are you storing sensitive data? How secure is it being stored in order to ha- like help secure your customers' information? Talk about how you have seen the evolution of data from the early days and today's cloud-native, Kubernetes-native world. I think in the early days, data was kind of guarded just because with on-prem data centers, uh, engineers were not able to touch data. It was always guarded by DB administrators. Uh, And now in the cloud native world, anyone can create a data store. Anyone can spin up a cluster and start storing and collecting and transmitting data with just a click of a button. And so that's that makes it much harder to safeguard if you can't really control what's going on. You're saying, you know, that different teams now have access to data. Uh, First of all, it is data is hard, it's challenging. What are the challenges that they face when they kind of interact with data? Uh, at the same time, from your perspective, the reason you created the company, so the risks that you see that when these teams have access to the data. So the big thing is, yeah, if anyone can create a data store uh, with obviously like, I used to work at Airbnb, right? And at Airbnb, any engineering team could create a database. Uh, obviously you would need pull like request approval because like it would need approvals, but sometimes those teams are overloaded with approvals and so things might slip through the cracks. So anyone could really spin up a database. Um, and with that happening, the company doesn't really know like what that team is starting to collect. Like the team could say, I'm collecting non PII, but how do you really know that they're not collecting and storing new types of sensitive data? Uh, and so these are the types of risks that occur uh, is like not really knowing what types of data are being stored and where and where they're going. So, for example, all these third parties that company, that, that employees could be sending their data to as well. Is it only that what kind of data they are creating or is it also about what kind of access they might have to data because we can talk about the whole access management. A hundred percent. So, so uh, talk about the, yeah, <laughs> let, let's look at data from the holistic point of view. Yeah, so there's obviously yeah, the data that people are storing and then it's how it's being stored. Obviously the configurations in the cloud are pretty uh, abstract. So it's hard to know what you're doing when you change some configuration um, that might leave the data open to the world. And then there's obviously the access control. At most companies, I assure you, access is always granted, but almost never revoked. Uh, So if a team no longer needs access to the data, oftentimes their access is still there, even though it's not needed. And so that leads to a lot of risk because the more people have access to your data, the worse it is. Is there any specific industry that you work on and focus on or it's like data in general securing the data? It's data in general. So anything consumer focused like B2Cs, it could be fintechs, it could be healthcare related technology companies uh, or just consumer type companies. Uh, What kind of use cases that you've folks are mostly dealing with. What are the biggest challenges that you do see companies are facing? We've talked to, I think, 200 companies even before starting building Telescope. And something you hear again and again is they're still manually labeling data. So they're manually pinpointing where they're storing personal and sensitive data. So they have this spreadsheet that stores all the columns and all the tables that contain uh, PII. And that causes two problems. One is like this manual work is awful. No one likes to do this. And two, it's often wrong and like point in time. Uh, so that spreadsheet gets out- outdated as soon as it gets created and no one really thinks to update them. So that leaves them at risk for non-compliance with privacy regulations and security breaches. And so this is what we're seeing a lot of companies do and they kind of want to move away, but the tools in the market don't really provide enough value for them to move away from this spreadsheet. Right. And so the way we're automating this at Telescope is 
for a lot of our customers, what we do is we connect to their cloud accounts, such as AWS, uh, GCP, Snowflake, uh, Azure, and we automatically inventory all the data that exists there and automatically classify where they're storing PII and who that data is about. So we can tell you we found a customer's address in this table, or we found your employee's first name in that S3 bucket. Uh, and so once we have this information, then our customers are automating on top of our results. So one company is using our results to automatically mask sensitive customer data in Snowflake. Uh, so that's one use case. Another use case is companies are automating data deletion on top of us for compliance purposes. Do you also see that we need a culture shift or you see that a culture shift is also happening or how we handle data should become a, a organization wise because as you said everybody is creating some data so number one is that do we need a cultural shift when it comes to handling data and number two is that is it already happening or you think that we have to do some work to make it happen i think it's definitely already happening i think the culture shift needs to happen you can write as many policies as you want in terms of how to handle data but no one really reads those policies so they really need to be integrated in the software development life cycle and you see that already happening. Like at Airbnb, my whole security, the whole data security team was software engineers. So we were all like implementing code, coding and like integrating the policies within the de development lifecycle. And with Telescope, like you can easily integrate all of our APIs within your software development lifecycle to prevent those breaches or prevent that data from being stored in the first place. Now, when we look at company like Airbnb, these are big companies and also they are more data centric companies. Um, uh, let's also look at average companies who, once again, they're, uh, as you said, you know, it don't matter which kind of company they are, they are dealing with Dila. How much is this happening at that level? And uh, if you feel that, hey, because we have to secure them as well. I think all companies are start are collect a lot more data than you would think. <laughs> and they also, a lot of that data is useless. And so it's just sitting there. And it's not just the Airbnbs of the world, but most companies store at least terabytes, if not petabytes of data. Uh, and that's a common practice. And I think now you're seeing more modern companies think about data minimization, uh, whereas those like not, not as modern companies still are collecting more and more information in the name of big data. Uh, to, yeah. How companies, irrespective of whether they're mature or big companies or startups, whether they're greenfield or brownfield deployment, when they look at data so that they can have a very, uh, you know, kind of, data centric approach from from the very beginning the one recommendation i have is don't think about like collecting as much data as you can is think about it in a way of collecting the right data and the data that's going to improve your metrics uh whatever those metrics are because if you're collecting everything and anything then most of that data will sit unused and you won't truly get the value out of the data that you would if you thought about it in a holistic sense how are you kind of catering to NST? What kind of solutions, offerings you have? At Telescope, we offer two things. One is to help you secure the data that you've already collected. And two is secure or prevent data from being stored in the first place. So for the second part, we offer an API that can classify and redact data before it gets stored. So you can plug it into your code base to prevent sensitive data from leaking into logs, uh, from collecting sensitive data and storing it in a database, or even fraud, preventing users from sending credit card numbers to one another, um, things like that. And then this, the more platform-based solution to help you understand the data that you've already collected. So we discover, classify, and automatically help you remediate any security and privacy issues you have uh, within your cloud data stores and third-party vendors. I mean, if you look at, as we're discussing, this is kind of crowd market and we live in a data-driven world. And then we talk about security and I talk to a lot of teams. First of all, there's a lot of evolution happening with the observability, monitoring, tracing. But what, what, when, I, when I talk to folks, you know, one thing that keeps happening is that, you know, uh, all happen is that they get a lot of notification alerts, alert fatigue happen there. Uh, while it's good to kind of build a culture of more uh, like uh, approach towards security of data, but also we have to make it easier for teams also so they can continue to focus on that without getting either distracted by those alerts or it just like, hey, there are so many alerts that actually the real issues can go under the carpet. So talk about how you folks are dealing with this to, to simplify it, make it easier for teams. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the biggest like 
thing that people people complain about is alert fatigue due to the amount of false positives. So the two ways that we can help with that is one, we have the best in class classification system and we classify things in two ways. Uh, so one is saying you have an address uh, in this table and it's an address. And the second one is saying, who is this address about? Uh, is it a customer's address? Is it a public address? Is it... Um, is it a restaurant's address? So with these things, you can get not only, okay, we found like sensitive information in this table, but we can actually truly tell you this is your customer's information. So you need to deal with this ASAP. Uh, and then second of all, we don't, uh, we provide APIs. And so we want to steer away from the alert based uh, platforms and want teams to take our data and automate on top of it instead of just getting alerted. And so once you can provide that trust that your classifications are accurate, then they'll be comfortable enough to use your APIs and automate automatically uh, instead of just getting alerted and manually sifting through those alerts and then taking action manually as well. Lizzie, thank you so much for taking time out today and of course talk about the company and evolution of data and how you folks are helping organizations, you know, securing their data. Thanks for all those insights and I would love to chat with you again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Swap.